rocket on it. Yes, it's being recorded. Um, it's great to welcome you here today, Abby, and we're really looking forward to hearing about um, rocket phonics. Lovely. Thank you so much. Let me share the screen. And such is the modern era that I am now fully able to juggle screens, PowerPoints and chat. So I do have my chat box open on the screen. Please do pop questions in as they come up um, and I will go through at the end and make sure that we answer those for you. So welcome to Rocket Phonics. My name is Abigail Steele. My background is I've come from the classroom, 20 years a teacher, um, and I knew that I wanted my career to specialise in the teaching of phonics and not go down the management route, not become a head teacher. So I've worked with publishers, come out of the classroom quite a few years ago now, and I work as a phonics consultant. But let's get straight in and look at the programme Rocket Phonics. And I want to be um, very upfront with you about what makes Rocket Phonics unique. What is it that sets it aside from all of these other great programmes? Well, Rocket Phonics goes for a steady pace. I found in my teaching when I was a reception teacher that teaching children four, four letter sounds per week, week after week, whizzed them through the code and for some children that was absolutely fine but for many children they didn't keep up with that pace of teaching it was really hard to keep up so in rocket phonics we've slowed the pace down and we teach at a pace of two letter sounds per week and we'll explore that structure a little bit more as i talk rocket phonics is ridiculously mapped out it's all planned out and mapped and structured for you you know step by step bite size as phonics programs are these days it's based on straightforward clarity. Uh, in my experience as a consultant, traveling around lessons around the country, I've seen teachers who are really excellent at teaching. We're good at that bit, that's what we do. But when I've had discussions with teachers about the activities that they're doing and what it is that the children are actually getting from that activity, is that a reading activity? Is that uh, application of segmenting? What are they actually doing? People have found it really, really hard to pinpoint. And I found that Schools will talk to me about, oh, our children are really good at reading, but they're not so good at writing. So there's this concept of clarity and everybody being crystal clear about what skills it is that you are teaching or the children are practicing or the children are applying. And then of course, the engaging aesthetics. I've worked really hard with the team at Rising Stars to try and produce for you a program that really hits that sweet spot for the children that it appeals to them, the characters and the illustrations and the beautiful artwork, but also for the adults as well. Again, in my experience, I found that adults who don't love their phonics program don't do a good job of teaching it as much as the adults who do love their phonics program. This gives you just a very brief overview of only half of the program. This is sort of a, a chart that shows you sort of how big it is. And you can get this chart and the second part of this chart from the Rising Stars website gives you a visual of how big we are, but also it shows you in a snapshot that we do follow the book banding colours. Book banding colours, but with a modern twist in that we do not follow the book banding repetitive text element. We only follow the book banding um, criteria in terms of things like how many pages, how many sentences on the page, how many words in the sentence, how many characters we develop whether we have different punctuation features or speech development or plot line development through the story. So we follow that leveling, but we took out repetitive text. And of course we aligned it with being fully decodable in the letters and sounds order. When we started making our Rocket Phonics um, books back in 2015, that was the aim of the game. We wanted to make decodable readers to match those schools that were using letters and sounds. Rocket Phonics as a teaching and learning program is mainly digital. Everything that we pr produce is on an online platform. So we're a digital product, but we also have print resources. We have hard copy flashcards, the pupil practice booklets, and of course, reading books. This is just some little screenshots to give you a visual of what our online platform looks like. So very user-friendly, easy to use. And if you click on the orange menu button, it brings up a very simple menu. There's your resources, teaching big books, flashcards, interactive flashcards, pupil booklets, frees and posters, sounds maps, teacher guides, target practice readers and rocket phonics readers. All of the hard copy books that we produce are in this online platform as well. Something like 168 that we have there at the moment. Then if you click on a resource, it will come up on the screen like this. It will give you sort of an overview of what that resource is going to be. And then you'll click on the button at the bottom and it will open on your screen. 
So what stuff do you get? What are the resources in Rocket Phonics? Well, very central to the program and the sort of way that we do things are these digital big books. They're designed to feel like a real book, a big book, like the type that we used to use with children about 20 odd years ago when we used to have a big carpet book that we shared with them. And they provide the teacher with the stimulus and the sort of context for delivering the teaching. So they're real stories. There are three big books per year group and each big book divides into two episodes. What this means is you have a story across a six week half term block and you use that story page by page as you teach through the half term to deliver all your content. The content is read by the adult, so the adult reads the text on the screen, reads the story, or we have storyteller audio um, with sound effects. And then we have the yellow lozenges on the page show us the focus letter sound. And the blue lozenges on the page give us our cumulative decodable words that we can read with the children or we can model to the children if they're not blending independently yet. Flashcards, we have two sets of hard copy flashcards and then everything is repeated in digital <clears throat> on the online platform. Flashcards are A5 in size and produced to have that sort of laminate where they feel nice and they move smoothly and they're not too sort of cumbersome in your hands. On the fronts of the cards, we have the letter sound correspondence and we use a key picture mnemonic in the first set of flashcards. The reason that we've chosen to go with key words and pictures rather than, for example, ditties or songs um, is twofold really. Firstly, we found that sometimes children do hang on too much to those other mnemonic systems and they tend to remember, for example, the phrase rather than remembering the actual letter and sound. And we found that with the pictures that didn't happen so much, but also having a picture mnemonic system provides you with a language for spelling. So example, we typically use flashcards for a visit and review for a blending skill. They're seeing the shape, they're saying the sound, but we also need to remember to practice the reverse children hearing the sound and identifying the shape. So if I'm doing air writing with my children for segmenting and I'm calling out sounds and I say ah, and they write the A shape and I say uh, s and they write an S. And then I say k, the children are going to think, well, which k does she mean? And if we have this language that's a mnemonic with a keyword and picture, I can say air write the k as in duck. And the children associate that with, oh, I need the CK. So it's more than just a mnemonic system for learning those initial letter sounds, it actually goes further and supports spelling. When we get to flashcard set two, we do not have the picture on the flashcards. The pictures exist throughout the whole code and you can find them on the wall freeze and you can find them in the teacher handbook. But on the flashcards, at this point, we want the children to build up that stamina and that resilience to be able to look at that graphene. For in this example, look at the split diagraph with the U and the E and know that actually that can be U or it can be U. And if they only learn that in association with a picture, Sometimes that can become muddly for them and we just want to build up very quickly that abil ability to know about different uh, pronunciations and different spellings. On the reverse of our flashcards, we have cumulative decodable words that you can use for blending activities and for spelling examples, which also support the adults because if you're struggling to think about what that sound is, you have it within the context of a word. We then have pupil practice booklets where the children go and do the practicing. One of the things historically that we found observing children around the country is that teachers are great at teaching, but there was no time left for children to do enough substantial practice to really embed all of those skills. So we have these pupil practice booklets which have loads of pedagogy and rationale behind those. A little bit of that to give you now is that we have these split into blending pages and segmenting pages. Blending pages focusing on from letter sound level, code level, to word level, to sentence level, and later on to text level, and then segmenting pages. So focusing on those spelling and writing skills from letter sound code level, to word level, to sentence level. We have those also for a bit of consolidation, tricky words, and some assessment. Of course, we have the, the typicals, we have beautiful sounds maps that you can print off. They go throughout the code freezers that can be put up on the wall. And these are download and print. You just download them off your platform, print them as many times as you like. And then our reading books. We have two types of reading books in Rocket Phonics, all fully decodable. We have the original Rocket Phonics books that we've been producing since 2015, following the letters and sounds order, 
But those books, um, because of the way that everybody was doing books at that time, and the shift is now focused a little bit more to become tighter, you have to know more sounds, the jumps are bigger. So in each level, you have to know more to be able to read those books, which is absolutely fine because they lag behind your classroom teaching. But when we started to develop the teaching program Rocket Phonics, we made a new layer of target practice readers that build up in tiny incremental steps. So you might have only taught four more letter sound correspondences, but you've now unlocked the next level of books. And that's all um, very explicit for you in the teaching plans. So all fully decodable and compatible. Rocket Phonics readers, slightly bigger batches of sounds. Target practice readers, smaller steps of sounds to unlock those books. Of course, all completely labelled up for ease of reference and organising in the classroom. And with our books, we are not prescriptive. The recommendation is that you might like to consider using target practice readers as part of your teaching within at the end of a blending lesson or for a once a week shared whole class reading lesson, one book between two, teacher brings it up on the big board and you have a shared lesson or group guided. But schools are all so different in the way that they want to teach and the way that they logistically and feasibly can manage that teaching, that to be prescriptive about the ways of doing that would not be supporting the schools in the way that they need. So we make the suggestion and the recommendation, but how you organise your reading is up to you. Of course, uh, we use a lovely range of illustrators, um, things like cream and pastel backgrounds for the paper that are quite dyslexia friendly. We have fiction and we have nonfiction. And on the online platform, these have quizzes at the end and you can allocate them to home. So you can assign the books to be read online on the digital platform and they have a quiz. And there's all sorts of fancy things like a reporting tool so you can see who's answered what questions. These are the Rocket Phonics reading books, the books that we already produced before and we still continue to produce. These are the books that I tend to recommend you use for your homeschool one-to-one -one reading. And they lag slightly behind. So in class, you might be teaching uh, the different spelling variations of the I sound and you're working at blue level and your book is Spike the Spy, which is focusing on those different spellings of the I. But actually for the book that the children take home, it will be bespoke to the child. Lots of them will be working at the level behind at yellow because you've taught all of that content. And of course you might have the odd child at pink or red and you might have an Alice who is a very gifted reader and she's working up at turquoise level. And that's absolutely fine and correct. Within the planning, it's all mapped out for you to show you how everything aligns. So in the Rocket Phonics book, those bigger clumps of sounds, here are the letter sounds, here is the color band, here is the teaching week at which this becomes fully decodable. There are teacher guides, they're absolutely huge. We recommend you don't print them all off, they're on the online platform and they're broken into sections. Your introduction section, weekly plans, daily plans, assessments and SEND guidance. And we also have a tracking sheet um, sort of an Excel spreadsheet tool where you can record assessment data and share it with your staff. A bit about the pace and progression and a bit more about the structure. So slow and steady wins the race. It's a, it's a situation of the hare and the tortoise. We teach slowly. We teach two letter sounds per week. This enables us more easily and more smoothly to help the children keep up with the pace of teaching. It's consistent. We don't have patches of time where we just spend weeks going round in circles or revising, but we cover stacks of code, very ambitious. In reception, we actually teach 60 letter sounds. In year one, we teach 70 letter sounds. So Rocket Phonics is a total of 130 letter sound correspondences. This is how we align with Letters and Sounds 2007. Very, very similar. The thing to point out is that in Rocket Phonics, we don't have an explicit phase four. In original Letters and Sounds, you would stop your drip, drip, drip teaching of letter sounds and you would just practice those word structures at phase four. We've incorporated that into phase three. So we started a bit earlier and we continue doing those structures whilst we're still teaching phase three because we've gone a little bit slower. And then we actually tip into phase five at the end of reception. And then of course, year one is the same, we work through phase five. There are lots of useful documents for you in the teacher guide. 
This comes from the introduction section. It is a scope and sequence chart, and it shows you literally week by week what you're teaching. We also align with lots of Debbie's ideas about systematic and incidental, because I'm not going to say to my children, sorry kids, I'm not going to model a sentence for you with the common exception words I and the in week two, because we don't cover that till week four. Of course I'm going to incidentally bring that in, that's part of my natural teaching. So that structure is there to support and guide you, but not to be restrictive. This is a little uh, a different chart, same information, but shown now as half-termly grouping. So you can see in half-term one of reception, this is the content that we're going to cover. This is the content that we're going to try and really get those children to embed before we move on. Of course, the challenge with phonics teaching is that we have to teach knowledge of the alphabetic code, the skill of blending, the skill of segmenting, the skill of handwriting. We need to do it at code level with reversibility. We really do need to do it at word level with that vocabulary. It kills me if children don't ask. But miss, we read the word jig. But what is a jig? I want that ethos of interest and curiosity in words. I want the vocabulary. I want to take them to sentence level and build that fluency. I want to take them to text level and build that comprehension. Because what we've had historically is fantastic phonics teaching. But when children go to their English lessons or their wider curriculum lessons, they don't transfer those skills. So by bringing more of that into the phonics lesson, by expanding our de definition of phonics to include foundational literacy, we bridge that gap into other subjects. To achieve this, the rocket phonics solution is to follow the teaching and learning cycle that we're all familiar with, but we split it into this blending focus and this segmenting focus. This gives us a weekly structure of a new letter sound on Monday with a blending focus, repeat it on Tuesday with a segmenting focus, repeat that cycle with a new letter sound on Wednesday, Thursday, your second of the week, and on Friday have a focus on common exception words, consolidation, assessment, enrichment. This is what it might look like on a blending day, flashcards for a visit and review, your big book story spread for teaching, your pupil practice booklet for practice and application, and then your target reading practice booklet for further application. And a segmenting day, revisit and review a segmenting activity such as air writing or bingo or Scottish on a sounds mat, flip chart modeling with a hand routine, moving to practice and application using pupil practice booklet and wider curriculum. A snapshot of a weekly plan, a snapshot of the daily plans. The structure is there to support you and not control you. The resources are there to support you and not control you. It's very important for me with Rocket Phonics that you understand the underlying concepts. That's part of empowering you that you have ownership of your phonics program and you will make it your own and you bring it to life. You are the X factor. Training and CPD options. I have a collaboration with Hodder with Rising Stars. So uh, I have a training team, I have a training company, Abigail Still Training. I currently have 14 extremely experienced consultants dotted around the country, and that team will continue to grow. We provide, through Hodder, who take the bookings, Rising Stars do the admin, one day insets online, one day insets in person, two day online, two day in person. And although we have a structure of that, we do work with schools to make it bespoke. So for example, a two day might be an inset training day to launch and then a consultancy follow up day with modeling lessons, troubleshooting any follow up training. Another solution for schools is also a self study online training package that is on my website, Abigail Still Training. This is just £425 per school for as many staff as you want to put on it for 12 months access. And this gives you a total of 12 hours of training, but it is designed for dip in and out. You don't watch the whole 12 hours back to back. You would be very um, tired at the end of that, but it's there for you to dip in and out as you have any questions. And there are about 40 videos in that and we will continue to add to it. Final thing to show you, because I know people ask about pricing, Rocket Phonics is designed to meet any budget. You can have it on a small budget, you can have the other reading scheme books that you already have that is absolutely fine, or you can go all out, you know, king prices and have the top end if you've been given a load of budget. We designed it to match all budgets. Usually what happens is I say to a school is if you can come up with £2,000, I can give you everything you need, including target practice readers at one between two pupils, like 15 copies of those, because 
Rising Stars have an incredible um, discount scheme where if you spend 4,000, you get 50% off. So a lot of schools I work with, we do a 4,000 pound order, gives them everything they need in abundance, but they get it for 2,000 pounds. The best way to find out more about Rocket Phonics is to get yourself the free online trial. You get access to everything for 30 days. So to do that, go to risingstars-uk.com slash Rocket Phonics or Google it. That is my presentation. And now I'm going to look at questions. Brilliant. So, Thank you so much. There is a question um, just about how long are the sessions, the daily sessions, yeah. please. So in Rocket Phonics, we recommend that the session is 30 minutes. So the idea would be 15 minutes of the teacher teaching and then 15 minutes of the pupils practicing. If you're in early years, that might not be feasible to have a full 30 minutes in one go. We would re recommend a 15 minutes teacher giving the input and then children go off their continuous provision and you pull back smaller groups and build up with five, 10, 15 minutes sort of through the year. That can be flexible for you. But the, the guideline is 30 minutes. Brilliant. And then are the children's worksheets booklets available to print or just available to purchase in, in hard copy? The children's pupil practice booklets are on the online platform. You can bring them up on the screen and you can see all the content, but you're not able to print those off. Unfortunately, you need to purchase those in hard copy. They are, I think they work out at something like £3.50 per booklet, but you can buy big boxes and then get your discount and it brings the cost right down. And then does it continue into year two? Year two is uh, in process. I am currently on uh, all nighters, staying up all night, churning out the year two content the best we can get it. And it will be coming out in 2022 next year. Also the nursery provision, we're bringing out nursery level as well. And one's just coming about provision for intervention. In terms of intervention, we don't recommend doing something separate and different. We would recommend that you use your Rocket Phonics, but there is an abundance of guidelines and guidance, including some case studies in Rocket Phonics, which you can go and access for free on this trial, go and have a look at that content, which describes to you ways in which you might cater for uh, the full range of SEND needs, actually. There's a lot of information on that. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. It's been really interesting um, to listen to you and to, for me to hear different programmes today. It's been really amazing. Um, we'll make sure that your um, presentation is passed on to everybody so they can go back and recap um, if they would like to.